Okay, now I'm going to quickly summarize. We're trying to find the field due to current loop at a point O in the center. We posit a current loop of radius A with the current I counterclockwise around the loop. And then we posit a point at distance B from the center. Doesn't matter where this thing is, doesn't matter how we rotate the loop, we're going to get the same thing. Um, and if you think about the IDL cross R, you see that the field at any point is always going to come out of the, uh, the field due to any segment is always going to come out of the loop. So we posit a segment I delta L, and we ask ourselves what contribution does this make to the field at a point at distance B from the center. And we put this point on the positive x-axis, and we can do that because of the rotational symmetry of the entire picture. Uh, so, uh, having done that, we ask ourselves, okay, well, you know, we know that we're going to have to do an IDL across a unit vector in this direction, so we're going to need this R vector. We're going to have the IDL vector. Uh, what is the R vector? This point being on the positive x-axis, the angle around to this vector is what we're going to call theta, and we're going to use the angle theta to help parameterize this. Okay? Um, and our r vector turns out to be, just by simple vector addition, the vector from here to here is a cosine theta i plus a sine theta j, something we need to understand instantly. The vector from the center to p is b i. The vectors, you know, this vector this vector and this vector go together into this picture. Here's the R vector. So this plus R equals this. We write that as an equation and we solve for R just by subtracting this vector from both sides and we get this. <coughs> okay. Now, and uh, that was all explained in more detail in the preceding along with a little bit of admonition to make sure you understand the circular model. Okay, quite a bit of admonition. Now we need, okay, we've got the R vector, okay, and we're going to be able to calculate R, which is just the magnitude of the R vector. That's going to be very straightforward. Um, what about the IDL vector? Well, it's going to be a vector of length DL or delta L. I should have written a delta instead of a D. Uh, make that a delta L. Uh, and I think I did it up here too. Let's make that a delta L. And I think I've got delta L's in most of my other calculations, but I'm not being real consistent. Okay. The question is, we assume we know I, and we took a delta L. We're going to let it go to zero in the limit and so forth. So we just call it delta L. What's the direction? Okay, well, here's our I delta L. Here's a vector at angle theta, well the angle from here to here is 90 degrees and it follows that the direction of I delta L is theta plus 90 degrees. So we get I delta L times a unit vector in this direction. And remember a cosine of an angle plus a sine of that angle, that's cosine of an angle times I plus a sine of that angle times J gives us a unit vector in that direction. If we understand the circular model, that's totally something we're completely comfortable with. Um, so, what's the direction? It's theta plus 90 degrees. So that's what we put in to our formula. And then we figure out carefully that the cosine of theta plus 90 degrees is negative sine theta. And we figure that out by the way uh, the cosine graph would transform to get the sine graph. We'd have to shift it 90 degrees to the right, which means after a little thinking, <coughs> the cosine of theta plus 90 degrees is negative sine theta. Similarly, the way this graph shifts, just using the basic transformations we hopefully learned in pre-calculus, we see that the sine of theta plus 90 degrees is the cosine of theta. And then we put that onto the unit circle and reason it out, and we see that our reasoning is consistent so that we're comfortable with this. As opposed to looking up a formula, um, we do it by understanding, ideally. Uh, when you're in survival mode, sometimes you go to a formula, but there's a reason for it, and you always try to need know what the reason behind the formula is. 
Okay. Our delta V contribution due to the I. There's another delta L there called a DL. <coughs> due to I delta L. Well, there's the formula. Okay. It's an inverse square. Where we're multiplying I times delta L cross with the R vector, the unit vector in the direction R. Okay, this is inverse square law. You can think of this by analogy and see how it compares to and differs from Coulomb's law, law of universal gravitation. Um, yeah, you have a cross product involved here. That's one difference. <coughs> think about why that is in terms of the experience you've had hands-on in the lab. Okay, now I don't like to write an R cubed here because it makes it look like an inverse cubed law, but I'm going to write it anyway. Okay, but this is the law. It's an inverse square law. We get another R down here because we've got to make our R vector into a unit vector in order to apply the law correctly. So one of the R's in the R cubed is just the R we have to use to make a unit vector. Um, Okay. Well, R is really easy. Um, it's just the square of the I component plus the square of the J component. And of course the J component is now negative A because I had an error before, so put a negative sign in there. It's not going to make any difference because we're squaring it. So now I say delta B equals K prime and I started to write it out and realized I needed a lot more room. So I another board in here and so we could write the whole thing out. Now remember I've got an error to correct. I had that as a plus and it's clearly a minus and that's going to make a little bit of difference in our, our vector. Um, so uh, well okay I think I've got deltas and all my L's here now. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're just going to plug into this formula, okay? We got our K prime, there's our K prime. We've got our I delta L vector, which we've written as I times R, uh, there's another delta, our I delta L scalar multiplied by the vector in that direction, okay? So, we factor out the I delta L scalar, and here's our vector direction unit vector in the direction. We cross that with the R vector. Okay. Actually we're crossing it with the unit vector in the direction of R, but by cubing uh, what we would ordinarily square, we take care of that. And there's an error here because uh, when I wrote this out, I have my B minus A cosine theta times I, it's a little jumbled up there. And it's a plus a sine theta j, but it should be a minus a sine theta j. And that's going to change my cross product just a little bit. And this denominator is going to simplify. We finally simplify it down here, and this should remind you of the law of cosines and maybe give you a little insight <coughs> into what this is. Um, but when we do our cross product now, okay, we're going to have this i times this j. And this is a negative sine theta, and this is a negative a sine theta. Times i cross j, i cross j is k. We're going to get a sine squared theta, we're going to get an a, but we're going to get a plus here instead of a minus, so there's a correction. And then we're going to have minus j cross i, uh, hence the minus here, but also times k because j cross i is negative k. So my minus sign here is because this is going to be minus this times this times k. Okay? Uh, now, again, presumably you know what you're doing with cross product. And you, you can write out the determined cross product, but you can really do this without doing so. I don't care if you do, it's okay. I can live with that. But you have cosine theta multiplied by the quantity b minus a cosine theta. And this corrects something that I didn't like before. I really wanted a cosine.